also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. What's the purpose possession? Jesus bought your soul with the blood of the Lamb. You were bought for a price, predestinated or not. There's no other way but by Jesus. The purchased uh, possession unto the praise of his glory. So praise Jesus, he saved you by the blood of the Lamb. There is no other way. Now I've heard people in predestination say, Oh, we don't have to say the sinner's prayer. God heareth not a sinner. So how can we say the sinner's prayer? He won't hear us. Well, that's in scripture. But again, they're taking everything out of context. If I can find it here, let me see. But anyway, we'll go to uh, Matthew chapter 4. We'll have a look at what Jesus said about that later. Matthew chapter 4. This is after Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the uh, River Jordan. He was carried into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days and 40 nights. When he came back out again, the very first word of Jesus' mouth when he started preaching, I'll read it to you, listen. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent. The number one word of Jesus' mouth, capital R and two full stops, repent. If Jesus tells you to repent and believe the gospel, that's what you should do. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The reason he said that, he is the door into the kingdom of heaven. He says, I am the door. By me, if anyone enter in, they shall be saved. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Jesus again says, repent and believe the gospel. I want to go to Acts 3. Now these people that Peter is speaking to here in Acts 3.15 or 19 uh, this is the one that says crucify Jesus the one that rid of him but after he explained who Jesus was and he arose from the dead their eyes were starting to be opened but Peter says this to them but those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer he had so fulfilled is all Jesus had to suffer. It was all prophecy that he would do that. And it was because of your blindness, you couldn't see it. He wanted him crucified. But God had a great plan for it. Now when they realized that, the first word of Peter's mouth to tell them was, Repent. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So repentance causes conversion. You'll be converted into a new creature in Christ Jesus. That your sins may be blotted out. He says, there is no other way. You must repent in your heart, Jesus said. Peter said the same thing. Repent and believe the gospel. Believe what Jesus told you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That your sins may be blotted out. They'll be washed away with the blood of the Lamb. When the times of refreshing shall come, from the presence of the Lord, because he'll send you the Holy Spirit. Come on into my heart, Lord. Your sins is blotted out, washed away. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Even what was spoken since the world began, predestination and everything else, at the various taxes, you still have to repent. Repent and be converted. So predestinated or not, you still have to repent and accept Jesus. Um, if we go over to Acts 11 now. Again, this is Peter speaking. He had a vision and God told him to go speak to the Gentiles. Now the Jews are not supposed to be in a Gentile house. 
But God said, look, Peter, if I have plans, don't you call and clean. You go and see them. So he did. And now he's telling the Jews at uh, Jerusalem what happened, why he went into the Gentiles' house, because the Jews were not supposed to do that. This is his testimony. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, as on us at the beginning. At the beginning means at the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell. It's now the Gentiles, people are not Jewish, it's the Holy Spirit was given to them too, my God. Right in front of my face, I've seen it. Then remember I, the words, how the Lord said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we also must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We must, water won't wash your sin away, but the Holy Spirit will. For as much then as God gave them the like gift, the Holy Spirit of truth, as he did unto us who believed, you must believe also on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I should withstand God? Or who are you that you should withstand God? If God wants to give people the Holy Spirit, He tells you, don't care if you're predestinated or not, He died for all sinners. Well, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, now listen to what they said, then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So repentance grants you eternal life. And that comes from God. Esau looked for a place of repentance and couldn't find it. Searched it with tears, couldn't find it. You can find it. It's at the cross of Jesus Christ where he shed his blood and asked him to save you. So now that we see these things, let's go to Luke 13. And hear what Jesus has to say about it. There were certain uh, people who were making blood sacrifices. And Pilate, who was a Roman governor, he wanted to join in and he had something that had blood to it, supposedly for the remission of sins. But blood and the blood of animals won't work. So they come and told Jesus about this. So Jesus says this to them. I'll read the whole thing. Therefore, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with theirs sacrifice. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans are sinners above all Galileans, because they allowed such things. But Jesus tells us this, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, this comes from the mouth of Jesus himself, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So a sinner's prayer is the prayer of repentance to God. Forgive me, God. Forgive me, Father. I've sinned against you and against heaven. Wash my sins away with the blood of the Lamb, like Jesus said he would do. He says, if I don't repent, I'll perish. So why would you waste time and say, I don't have to say the sinner's prayer. I don't have to repent. I'm predestinated. Predestination doesn't work without the blood of the Lamb. If we go to John 9:31. We take a look at this here, and this is what it says. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. So if God doesn't hear sinners, how can if one that's a sinner come and say the sinner's prayer if God doesn't hear them? Well, here's the difference. A sinner that's praying greedy prayers, Lord, let me have this, I want this new car, I want this new house, I want this, I want that. God doesn't hear those people. Because they're not repentant. There's no repentance in their heart. Jesus says, you follow me for the wrong reasons. Many people hope to see they can get out of them. But when God calls a man, 
No man comes to the Father, but he's called by the Spirit of God. He calls sinners to repentance. Now it becomes the works of God. It's not the works of the sinner or the prayer of the sinner. This is God moving in the man's life and he draws him to himself. He's ready to accept this man's prayer of repentance. That's the difference. So God hears this man's prayer because he is sad in his heart he sinned against God in heaven. Now if we go over to Romans no, Matthew 19 Matthew uh, 9.13 we'll go there first Matthew 9.13 Now this is the words of Jesus again. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Again, Jesus called this man. He said, although I don't hear uh, the prayer of a sinner, it's when I'm calling them, a sinner to repentance, he says, now it's me that's making the move, not them. No man comes to the Father, but he's called by the Spirit of God. He says, now it's my works. And I'm giving this man eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to understand with. He's going to repent and I'm going to see this sinner's prayer of repentance. And why? Because I have called sinners to repentance. He says. That's the difference. Now if we go over to First John. Chapter 1. In First John chapter 1 it's about... Uh, John witnessing, John was one of the disciples of Jesus, he said we were with Jesus, we heard him, we heard him preach, we heard all these things and now we want to share it with you. So he's talking to people that's not saved yet. But he goes on to say this, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one, one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So it's the blood that cleanses you from sin, not predestination. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Because many people think because they're predestinated, they have no sin. That God's chosen them. Because you're only deceiving yourself. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, here comes confession from the mouth. Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need your help. I heard you shed your blood for me, that you would take my sins away, you would save me, you would forgive me all sin and iniquity. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He says, it's gone. Once you say, confess your sin to me, he says, it's gone. Now what takes place after that? Well... The Bible tells us this. You've said the sinner's prayer. You've asked Jesus to forgive you. And this is recorded again in God's word. Some men's sins are open beforehand. Going before to judgment. Why are they open to forehand, beforehand and going to judgment? Because you're saying the sinner's prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your help. Judge me, Lord. He says, I have judged you. You're guilty. But I'm letting you off. Jesus Christ paid the penalty, paid the price. He bought you back with the blood of the Lamb. You're free. Everything's blotted out against you because of my son Jesus. For some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. Now ones that refuse to say the sinner's prayer, this is what happens to them. And some men, they follow after. The sins follows after them to the great white throne judgment. And it's too late to repent then. You're going to be judged. So believe me, it is a wise thing to say the sinner's prayer and ask Jesus to forgive you. It's all free. Romans, verse 10. Romans, verse 10 says this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. You see, I believe everything Jesus told me. 
He's called me to repentance. He says, if I don't repent, I'll perish. He says, I'm confessing with my mouth. I believe everything Jesus has told me. And shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It's your belief in Jesus Christ that gets you the, the gift, the holy gift, a free gift of Jesus' righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the sinner's prayer brings salvation. And when you believe in your heart, Jesus arose from the dead. God says you believe unto righteousness and salvation. Now, Romans chapter 5 tells us this. You've said the sinner's prayer. you believed in Jesus. You've asked God to give you the Holy Spirit of truth. You've done all these things. And this is what takes place. For if by one man's offence, death reigned by one, that was Adam, fell in sin, we were all born in sin because of it. But God fixed it through Jesus Christ. Much more is far beyond the sin part. Much more. They which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Righteousness is a gift from God. And you only get it through the sinner's prayer, except in Jesus Christ. He trades you places. We give him our death and sin. He gives us his life and righteousness. My grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Not by thousands trying to be good. By one. Jesus Christ, the Bible says. So righteousness is a gift. If we go to the book of Isaiah, and we go to chapter 64, I want to hear, 